Welcome, my friend. I'm Chef Lance, a professional chef and baker, plus a culinary school instructor. And tonight, we're going to make this creamy lemon chicken piccata. And I'm going to do it in one shot to see if I can do this in under 30 minutes. You'll see the timer running. You'll know at the end if I did it or not. So stay tuned. I'll be uh, warmed up. All right, so here we go. Let's start with our chicken. I cut some cutlets. Uh, the, the, there's a clip of that. You'll see me doing that. So I'm going to pull it out of the brine and I'm going to dry it off just like that and um, set that right here. Now, when I uh, did the cutlets, I was a little off on my thickness, so I'm not using all of this chick chicken, but I'm going to use most of it. All right, so let me get this over. I'm going to make four portions tonight. And uh, that'll be, you know, family four. If you need to scale this up or down, uh, it's so easy to do. Don't worry about it. Just do it, right? You can just know ahead of time on prep day how many you're going to cook for. And then I need one more cutlet. And let's see. There we go. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. Now, the rest of that chicken is not going to go to waste. After the video, I'm going to uh, oh, cook that up for me. So, there you go. All right. So now I have my four cutlets here, and I've got them dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, mix together my uh, breading that I'm going to use on this. So I've got, got my flour. By the way, all the measurements are on the website, so you can just go there and get that. Um, I'm going to dump in some Parmesan cheese with that, a little salt, and we don't need a lot of salt. Actually, that's a little more than I needed. Let me pull that out. See? Mistakes happen. All right, so now, salt and pepper, and I'm just going to whisk that together real quick. I'm not looking for a heavy breading on this. And so as I'm getting started, I'm going to go ahead and turn my uh, pan up to medium high. I'm going to get that started. We're going to cook this in uh, butter, but to cook with butter, I'm going to add a little neutral oil to help uh, raise the smoke point. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we go. Quickly uh, dredge these. And again, I don't want any excess on here and I don't want a heavy breading. I just want enough to Give a little bit of coating with that Parmesan cheese. This is not a standard breading technique. I've done a video on the standard breading technique. This is just a quick little dusting here is all we're doing. Just a quick little dusting. Shake off any excess. There we go. And the last one. I tell you what, I don't know if you've ever had a um, creamy lemon chicken parmesan before, but this dish is so incredibly delicious. Okay. So now we've got that. Set this pan out of the way. Now I'm just going to wait now for my pan to heat. And it's not heating. Oh, the things that can happen. Let me see. Oh, that's, you know what? I turned on the wrong one. How about that? Listen, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to cook. You just got to know which dials to turn on. All right, so there we go. Now it's starting to warm up. And I'm going to go ahead and get my oil in. A little premature, but I'm on a time delay, right? I mean, on a uh, deadline. So I don't want you guys to say it can't be done at home. Uh, you got to try this oil out. I'll have a video soon on it. Okay, so we're going to let that warm up just a bit. Now, let me talk about something uh, that we're, I was going to talk about later. This is my chicken broth that I'm using. Uh, I'm doing a video very soon on how to make your own chicken stock for you to have at home. 
But if you don't have that and you don't have room to make it or you're just out, uh, one of the ways I like to, uh, to do that, as opposed to buying the boxes or cans of chicken broth or chicken stock at the store, is I love this product better than Booyah. This is not a promotion. They don't sponsor me in any way whatsoever. They just make a great product. And this is their, uh, their roasted chicken base. And so you just follow the directions on the back of the uh, package here uh, for the amount of broth that you need. And that's what it, that's what it is right there. So very, uh, very aromatic. Anyway, so you give this a shot. All right. So the oil is warming. I'm going to put in my butter and we're going to get that melted. All right, starting to melt. Now, if I don't need all of this oil when we're finished, then I, I will dispose of it um, and with our compost. By the way, this is a good time to say that all of the, uh, all the recipes we do here on the Chef Lance Show, we do not throw any food waste whatsoever into the garbage. Uh, we already have a large enough landfill problem with that kind of stuff in there. And so we compost all the food waste that we have. We don't throw any of the cooked food away. Uh, we either uh, eat it ourselves or we donate it. So we do not waste anything uh, on the Chef Lance show. So, uh, and you can tell I probably have enjoyed a meal or two. All right, come on, come on, come on. Let's get it going. So when you hit the wrong dial, this is what happens. But we're going to get it melted. I turned it up just a little bit to go ahead and speed that process up, and I'll turn it back down when, when we get this ready. So what I want to do uh, is I want to test the oil. You may have seen this before. You can sprinkle a little flour in. If it does nothing, it's not ready. And if it uh, kind of pops and sizzles, it is. Uh, that is not ready yet, but we're getting close. So the key to any uh, successful cooking adventure, especially when you're cooking on a deadline, uh, not what I'm doing to myself here, but just you come in from work, you're already tired, you got the stresses from that, and now you've got this quote unquote daunting task of putting a meal together. But with a little planning and choosing a day to prep, so uh, mine used to be Sunday afternoon uh, watching football. It could be Saturday for you, but all of this stuff was prepped out and ready to go. So all I have to do is bring it out of the refrigerator. Now, I don't recommend breading the chicken ahead of time. Uh, I do recommend doing a brine. By the way, I've got that video on the brine where you can click on it. Uh, so you'll know how to do perfectly brined chicken. And that, uh, that brining method works for chicken, all kinds of poultry and um, pork as well typically with red meat we don't brine the red meat we do a, what we call a dry brine which is a light cure uh, but those could be if you wanted to so all right so i've got this going and let me test it one more time all right not quite there so i could do a little dance for you but I will, I'll spare you that, and I won't sing. How's that? All right, I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator. So we'll test it one more time. And we're still not there. So see, this is real life. I'm not cutting. I'm not going to make a jump cut or any kind of transition. We're going to wait on this to get ready because that's what we do. So let's talk about what we've got going on here. We're going to fry the chicken in here. Then uh, we're going to set it. I have a warm oven going down here at about 200 degrees. That's the lowest setting I can go on this oven. So once we take it out, I'm going to put it back on the sheet, pop it back in the oven. Oh, but Chef Lance, you got raw chicken on here. You're going to put cooked chicken back on it? 
Yeah, don't do this at home, kids. I'm kidding. Uh, what's going to happen is, is after we make the sauce, I'm bringing the chicken back out, and it will actually be cooked again in the sauce. And so no worries about cross-contamination or anything like that. Uh, if I weren't doing that, then I would certainly get a clean one and, and uh, put the uh, fried ones or the cooked ones on the clean one. But in this case, it's going to be all right because we we're going to do two cookings. So we've got obviously the oil and the butter going. Uh, we've also got the uh, chicken broth, the cream. We have lemon juice, lemon zest, Parmesan cheese, salt for the... Um, for the sauce, we've got Parmesan cheese to grate as a garnish. We've got parsley to grate uh, as a garnish. We've got capers we're going to add in the sauce and garnish. And I have sliced lemons I'm going to garnish with as well. So while I pontificated, let's see what we got going on here. That is pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. So I'm going to go ahead... And we'll put these bad boys in. You know what? I'm going to take it right back out because that did not have the sizzle I need for it to have. Otherwise, it, if I if I left it in there, it's just going to get soggy. Let me move, let me tell you what. I'm going to move this down. Let's see what we can do here. Sometimes with the induction cooktops every burner acts differently and so this is and uh, they're also sized differently i have a large one a large one a medium and me well all of the medium medium and then these in the corners are smaller ones but this one has quickly heated up so this one doesn't have quite the power that uh or does let me see what's going on see if i can get that going Guys, this is real life. This is me uh, messing up. Okay, now we got it because I hit the right part of the dial. There we go. All right, let me test it again. Okay. Always put it in, away from you. Oh, that's the sizzle I need. All right, so now we got them all frying. And they're going to be in here three to four minutes. Remember, we're going to do a two-stage cooking process. So um, we're going to get these to a golden brown. Now we're cooking with gas. All right. Ooh, I can smell that Parmesan cheese right now. It smells so good. All right, so uh, don't play with your food. <laughs> uh, my mother used to say that all the time. But uh, don't play with your food. When you're looking to get a golden crust on it, you're looking for that Maillard reaction. Don't be playing with your food. I just caught myself doing that. Okay. So we're going to sit here for a couple of minutes and see, there I go again. I was about to reach and, and mess with it again. So let me just leave that alone. I don't think I need that anymore. So while this is frying, I'm going to take a moment to kind of clean up. So I'm going to step off camera for a second. Sorry for all the banging. We'll put this back in the refrigerator. There we go. Now, all right. Now I'm going to take a quick peek and see what we got going on. Uh, not anywhere close yet, but I can sure smell that Parmesan cheese. Mmm. Get a little color on it. Turn these around. So the other thing about cooking on induction is that even though it's heating the whole pan, 
obviously, uh, not obviously, but the spot where the actual element is underneath will heat that part of the pan up uh, higher. And so you sometimes you have to watch out for that. I like induction. I'm not going to say I'm in love with induction. My favorite uh, form of cooking is, uh, or method is with gas. Uh, I think you have much more control. But uh, induction cooktops are becoming more and more popular, even in commercial kitchens, because the uh, stove itself is not putting off any heat. Uh, so the way a microwave works is it sends those little whatever microwaves and it hits the water inside the food and it causes those molecules to start jingling and jangling and they bump into each other and that creates friction and that friction is what creates the heat. With induction, there's a magnetic core underneath and you use a ferrous metal. This is stainless steel with the right alloy, the right mix. And so you will, uh, you will put it on the cooktop or you can use cast iron. It has to have a ferrous metal in it, aluminum, copper. They do not work on induction. So you have to have the right combination and we're starting to get there with the color. Uh, but you put it on here and the magnet causes the molecules of the pan itself to vibrate and hit each other and create friction and heat. So the stovetop doesn't warm up and transfer heat to it. It actually is causing the pan itself to develop heat. Now, if I move this, put my hand there, it's pretty hot, but that's the heat from the pan causing that, not the actual element itself. So I, you know, they're pretty nifty little things, but again, uh, if you're out of electricity, <laughs> you're not gonna be cooking by candlelight unless the candle is your heat source. Now, I'm getting a little color on there, nice little color. I'm gonna let it go for just a little longer Again, as I said, this is not heavily breaded, very lightly breaded, just enough to, you know, help aid with the color and by, provide some protection. And slicing them into cutlets, you, you uh, somewhat eliminate that big thick end of the chicken and you got that lower tail, you more even it out. So the cooking is more even. And I'm going to turn, yeah, I'm going to turn these over. And we are almost there, and I say almost there, not to finish yet, but to uh, move that into the oven to stay warm. Oh, that's looking good. If you can see a little bit of that. All right, I've got something else going on in the oven. I'm going to peek at it real quick. That is smelling good as well. All right. So I know that's not ready yet. But in the meantime, I'm going to move some stuff out of the way and move my pan over where I won't have to drip and make a mess when I take these off. There we go. Mmm. That smells so good. So have you ever had trouble with maybe a nonstick skillet or a skillet that is not nonstick with stuff sticking? If you've ever had that, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you'd like me to do a video on how to turn any pan into a nonstick pan. I'd love to show you that. It's really, uh, really kind of cool. Uh, and anybody can do it with any pan at home. So let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments below. Now this side, you always cook your presentation side first. And so uh, I've got that up. That's because when you flip it, it's showing up. So I am now ready to take this off and I'm gonna reduce this to a medium heat. I'm gonna take this over now to, um, to my oven. Put it in a warm oven. I also have my serving platter in there. Now, uh, I've got this. Now I'm deciding how much of the grease or the, not grease, uh, the oil. And it's got a little more than I want. So I'm going to go ahead and move around and go to my compost bowl. 
I'm going to pour it in there. I'm going to leave just a little bit. Uh, now we're going to uh, start cooking the garlic. As you, if you've been with me for any length of time, you know you can mince your own garlic. I teach that in culinary school, but when you're in a hurry, you can just get a few squeezes out, and you're done. So I'm going to cook that now until it's fragrant. What does that mean? If you can smell the garlic, it's time to add other stuff because you don't want to go any further. Uh, I'm going to deglaze the pan with my uh, cream, with first my chicken stock, chicken broth that, uh, that uh, I made with my better than bouillon. And that'll help. Oh, there it is. I just got the garlic. So we want to turn that up. Oh, that is smelling so good. All right, so now... Put that in, and again, that is our chicken broth. And now I'm going to take my uh, take my tongs here, use it like a spatula, and I'm going to scrape the bottom to release all of that fond. Fond, F-O-N-D, not doesn't mean that you like it, like uh, the English version of that. But fond is a French word, and it means base. And they're simply saying it's the base of the sauce. All right, so I've got most of that up. And it's also amazing to me how the hot pan and the room temperature, or what we call cold liquid, will cause that fond to release. And so let me see, we've got some goodies in there. Let me get the rest of that. Now I'm going to add my cream. And this is going to reduce. Okay. Not really looking for a vigorous boil, but I don't want it to sit around either. You guys got me on a uh, deadline. So I want to make sure I do that right. Okay, so we're going to let that reduce for a couple of minutes. Now, uh, by the way, thickness of the sauce. We're going to do our best to reduce this now and then as we put the chicken back in. And, but however, if it doesn't have the thickness that we're looking for, I've got a little cornstarch here. Um, and if we need to, I'll add some water to it and make a slurry and we'll use that to thicken. It's a one of the go-tos uh, for thickeners. The problem with cornstarch, however, is that it doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't reheat well. So it may tend to break on you. But in the, if you're serving something hot and at the moment, works very well it's the kind of thing that uh, my mother would do when she'd make uh, the sunday roast put it on slow we'd go to church come back and if the juices weren't quite thick enough she would use the cornstarch slurry all right so now we are we've got a little bit of a boil going on and reduction is now happening now here's the thing anytime you are cooking with a dairy product two concerns one is that it could scorch on the bottom of your pan. And the second one is that it could boil over, especially if it's covered. Now, that's not a danger here today. We got a, a very shallow amount in this pan right here, but it could happen. You know, in fact, uh, it happened to me just uh, yesterday, <laughs> actually, actually, no, the night before. But, um, you want to watch that. So never uh, never put a cream mixture on the stove and walk away because when it decides it wants to boil, it'll boil over in seconds. It, it will not wait on you, I promise you that. All right, so that's going, do, going through some reduction. Now, what I haven't done yet is I haven't added any salt to this. We're going to add Parmesan cheese, which is very salty. And then, uh, then we're going to taste for seasonings. So um, I'm going to let that reduce a little bit. i got to check on something else in the oven at the moment, and I'll be right back. All right, so that's that. Got a lot of things going on tonight. 
Um, that's another project. I'll tell you about that another day. All right, so that's reducing. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my, uh, I'm going to, not the lemon juice, I'm going to add my Parmesan. These little deli tainers make prepping so easy. Uh, it really does. And uh, I highly recommend if you don't have some, then uh, go ahead and get you some of those. Let me turn this alarm off. There we go. All right, so now we're going to continue the reduction process, but we're getting very, very close. So what I'm going to add now is I'm going to add some lemon juice. I'm going to add some capers. Saving some for garnish. And um, then in just a second, I'm going to add some lemon zest. And I'll save some of that for garnish as well. And we're very close to eating, by the way. Whoo, that's looking good. All right. I am going to go get my chicken. Oh, I've got potholes over here. I've also got my serving platter in the oven getting warm. So there's my chicken. I'm going to turn that down now. Our chicken is mostly cooked, so we're not looking to, you know, wipe it out, but we want it to uh, reduce here in the sauce. Oh, no, nah, that just smells wonderful. <laughs> just, whew, if you had smell of vision I need to invent that bad boy. All right, so now let's bring this back up. I'm going to set this out of the way. Okay. Let's get the temperature back up on that. Clean up as you go. All right, so now that's going to be reducing for a minute. Here comes the bubbles. I'm, I'm going to spill some on the floor before it's over. All right, so we've got that reducing. With any luck, we won't need the cornstarch, but better, uh, as my mother used to say, if I heard it once, I heard it a thousand times, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And that is a fact. So what I want to be doing also is I want to be spooning this sauce over the top. We got my ladle down here for when we need to plate. Oh, this smells so good. Woo! Tell you what, I, just because I am going to get, add a little water to my cornstarch and I'm going to add it to here and uh, I want it just a little thicker. Now the reason, we, first of all, you want to add cold water for this. The reason we add it in a slur, what we call a slurry where we add the cornstarch to water is we want the cornstarch thoroughly dissolved. If you put the powder right into your sauce, there is a likelihood that will actually uh, clump up and will not do the job for you, will make a mess, create some unpleasant mouth feel. So we don't want that. So we'll create a slurry and I'm going to add this in. Now, like a roux, a cornstarch slurry will not show you its uh, full thickening power until it comes to a boil. So you want to make sure this is thoroughly mixed in not just in one spot. And now uh, we're gonna bring it back up to temp. It's starting to bubble again. 
and I can already tell a difference in it. I do want it almost snap A. So let's see what happens here. So that's pretty close to, to nap A. Do I, do I want it any thicker? Let me add just a little bit more. By the way, that's my clean tasting spoon when the time comes. All right. We are very close. Very, very close. Oh, yeah. Now, now we're cooking the gas. That is uh, getting nice and thick. And that is about where we want it. So now, I'm going to let it cook a little longer. Uh, but I'm going to taste for seasoning. Remember, the Parmesan cheese has lots of salt in it, so I'm not just going to willy-nilly add salt to it. does need a little bit. And I'm going to add most of my lemon zest. And leave just a little bit for garnish. Make sure that salt gets stirred in all the way around. Oh, this is <laughs> my goodness, people! This is this is this is it. Mm. And also the capers too—they're salty as well. I think we're spot on. All right, now it's time for plating. So, I'm going to the oven to get my warm plate. Here we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is start. I'm going to start by uh, putting a little sauce on the bottom. Wow, this is so delicious looking. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to take my uh, tongs now. Start with the smaller pieces. Lay those guys like right here. Like here. Here. Now, if I were doing this at home for my weeknight dinner... I would probably, in this case, uh, I like to do it with a pasta. You could also do it with a rice. I'm not doing that here. But again, on prep day, I would have already made that. I would have tossed it with a little oil and put it in a storage container. Then I would have had a, a, a pot of uh, simmering water to, uh, to refresh it. In other words, to get it back to heat. So now let me just... Sprinkle that on, and then I would have put the pasta down and laid that over a bed of pasta. All right, so let's see what we're going to do next. A little parsley. Little capers. Then I'm going to... Um, I'm going to grate a little Parmesan for garnish with my microplane. Now, it's got plenty of Parmesan flavor, so I'm not looking to uh, just cover this up. I just want it to look purdy. My goodness. Uh, sometimes I amaze myself. Um, so now I've got that now. What else do I have to garnish? Oh, my lemon zest, yes. So I've got just a little lemon zest left. That's not very gracious, is it? <laughs> All right. Now look there. Here you go, my friend. Lemon, creamy lemon parmesan. Oh, one other thing. I almost forgot. I've got these uh, lemon slices here for garnish. We'll just put those around the plate. 
By the way, uh, you could have, uh, instead of just using straight up lemon juice, I use fresh squeezed lemon juice today. Uh, you could have just put slices of lemon in the dish itself and uh, had it cooking in there with it. All right, time is up. I'll show you uh, on the uh, on the video itself. You should have seen this the uh, timer going, so you'll know if I'm I did this or not. But if I didn't do it in thirty minutes, it was pretty darn close, even after my screw ups. Okay, so now let me get all this out of the way, and then we're gonna take a picture or two, and we'll come back for tasting. And I'll see you around the corner. All right, my friend, it is my favorite time of day, and that is tasting time. So we have this beautiful platter of uh, creamy lemon chicken parmesan. So now I'm going to take a piece, put it on the plate. We're just going to try one. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. we'll see, one of those will help. Mm -hmm. Put a little extra sauce over the top. So my timer just informed me that we came, I came in at about 35-ish minutes. So honestly, if I hadn't have had the bloopers in the very beginning, I think I would have nailed that thing in, in 30 or under. So, mm -hmm. all right, you ready? Yep. All right, she doesn't like capers, apparently. Well, I do. I just don't want to. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> okay, guys. Very tender. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Listen, I'm going to have another bite. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mmm. And I think angel hair pasta. Too. Angel hair, yeah. That's a great idea. Angel mm -hmm. hair pasta would be wonderful with this, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it would pair nicely with the... Oh, it would pair nicely with the sauce. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so guys... <laughs> Don't screw up like I did. You can do it under 30 minutes. <laughs> Let me uh, remind you of this. A day in the kitchen beats a day of working any day. We'll see you next time on the Chef Land Show.